What's up everyone? We've got some massive news to cover in the PlayStation Vita homebrew scene this month. The Flow has released the second public jailbreak for the PlayStation Vita, and it is called H Encore, where the H stands for hacks and homebrews. Now the amazing thing about Encore is that it supports the three newest firmware versions, namely 3.65, 3.67, and 3.68 can run Encore. So yeah, for the first time since 2016 when the original Henkaku exploit released, we can say that all PlayStation Vita devices out there, including the PlayStation TV, are capable of running Vita Homebrew, thanks to the flow and this Encore release. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing one of the simpler methods for installing the Encore exploit onto your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV devices. Since there will likely be a large number of newcomers to the PlayStation Vita scene, I'll also go over some of the basics towards the end of the video, such as recommended configuration and the Vita Shell file manager application. So in order to install Encore on your Vita devices, there's a few things you'll need to prepare. You'll need to make sure that your device is running firmware 3.65, 3.67 or 3.68. Now of those three firmware versions, I would say that firmware 3.65 is the best because if you have 3.65, you've also got the possibility to install Enso. Enso is basically a permanent hack which starts the moment you power on your device. Whereas if you have one of the higher firmware versions, you're going to need to launch the Encore bubble each time you power on your device to start the exploit and ensure that Vita Homebrew can run. So if your Vita is running lower firmware like 3.63, I would recommend updating specifically to firmware version 3.65 and I'll be sure to do a video talking about how to update to 3.65 firmware specifically instead of the latest firmware very soon. So other than needing the correct firmware, if your device is a fat OLED Vita, you'll also need a Sony memory card in order to install Encore. If you have a slim PS Vita or a PlayStation TV, you won't need that Sony Vita memory card because they have that internal 1GB storage you can use instead. And the last thing you need on the Vita side is to make sure that your device is linked to any PlayStation Network account. So while the Vita doesn't need to be activated, it does need to be linked to a PlayStation Network account. And just a reminder that you can always link a PlayStation Network account to a Vita, even from lower firmware, if you do a system restore, don't set up any Wi-Fi network, and then you'll get a prompt to link your PlayStation Network account, even offline from low firmware. So those are the three things that are required on the Vita side. Now let's take a look at the files you're going to need on your computer to install Encore. Okay, so if you check the first link in the video description, you'll find the Auto Encore Installer from Noah C3. This is a great tool which makes the installation process quite a bit simpler. So it's a zip file, and inside you'll find an executable with the config file. So I'm just going to extract this out to a folder here, and we'll be working with this very soon. The other thing you're going to need installed is QCMA. So if you didn't know, QCMA is an alternative open source content manager, which is just better than the Sony content manager, which you may have noticed in the past if you've connected your Vita to the computer. So you're going to need to make sure you have QCMA installed on your computer. So after you've installed QCMA on your computer, you're also going to need to connect your Vita to it at least once so that the account ID gets created on your computer. So once you have QCMA installed and running on your computer, let's go through the process of connecting the Vita to your computer as well, just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. Okay, so with QCMA running on your PC, go ahead and connect your Vita to your computer, either with the USB cable, or just make sure that it's on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. So then on the Vita, just open up the Content Manager application and go ahead and start the program. And then choose Copy Content and select PC. Now at this point, it should recognize your computer running QCMA. The first time you try to connect your Vita to the computer, you may get this prompt on QCMA saying that an unregistered PS Vita system is connecting via Wi-Fi. So you'll need to enter in the number on your Vita to pair the system to the computer. So once your device has been registered, it should also connect. And once you see this screen, you know that your Vita has connected to the computer. You may also notice down the bottom right hand corner of your computer screen that it will show that your Vita has connected. All right, so back on the PC, now we're gonna launch the Auto H Encore application and just be sure to run the program. Choose your language. And from here, you can see it's detected my AID. That's basically a unique identifier based on your linked PlayStation Network account which appears on your computer after you've connected with the content manager system. And it's also pulled up the default pathway for my PS Vita data on the computer here. So that's good. Next it just says to make sure you've opened QCMA, that you are connected. And you'll see it's got a note there that it says, if your Vita says you need to update, just turn off the Wi-Fi and restart the console. That's very true. QCMA does have an offline mode. You'll notice in the QCMA other settings, there is this offline mode, 
If you just make sure that that's ticked, you can put your device into flight mode or disconnect from the Wi-Fi, reboot, and then you'll be able to use QCMA, even if you're on a lower firmware like 3.65, no trouble at all. So with everything ready, we're just gonna make sure that this top box here is ticked. This will shrink the bubble down from 240 megabytes to 13 megabytes, which is quite nice. And otherwise everything looks good here, so I'm just gonna click the start button. So you'll see it goes ahead and downloads the exploit first. It also downloads the required files like pkg to zip as well as PSV IMG tools. So it may take a few moments for everything to download, just leave it do its thing. Okay, so after a while you'll get this done prompt with the final instruction steps, so let's walk through those as well. So down in the bottom right hand corner of your computer screen, right click on the QCMA icon and just choose refresh database. That'll make sure that the exploit that we just prepared is available to sync to your Vita. And then we'll switch back to the Vita itself. So now back in the content manager application on the Vita, you can go ahead and choose copy content from the PC to your PlayStation Vita. Choose applications, PS Vita, and then select H Encore. You can see it's a 13 megabyte exploit thanks to the tool, which has trimmed it down quite a bit. And then just choose copy and OK. So this should go ahead and send the exploit files from your computer over to your Vita's internal storage or memory card. So when that file's finished transferring, just push the home button, close out of the content manager application, and then scroll down and look for your fresh H Encore, and then just go ahead and try to launch the Encore package on your Vita. If you get this trophy warning, just push yes, you still wanna start the application. So you may see some crazy colors flash up on your Vita, and then eventually you'll get to this Encore bootstrap menu. So according to the flow, when you run the Encore application, it has about an 80% chance of successfully starting the kernel exploit. If your device stays stuck on a white screen for more than five seconds, you should simply close the application, which should then result in a crash and your device should be rebooted after about 10 seconds. If your device doesn't get rebooted, just hold down the power button for over 30 seconds to force a shutdown and then try the exploit again. So yeah, according to the flow, it should work successfully about 80% of the time and I've yet to run into an issue yet here. But if you do see that error, just know that it's expected and due to the nature of the kernel exploit being used, you'll just have to keep trying until it works. So the first time you come to this bootstrap menu, you'll want to push down and then just choose install Henkaku. Then also push down two more times to get to download Vita Shell and go ahead and run this. So this will download the Vita Shell application and install it into your live area. I only took about 20 seconds to run that on my PSTV here. And there's also this third option to reset your tiehen config.txt, which we'll ignore for now. So with that done, you can just choose exit. So now your Vita should be in a state where it is running Henkaku and able to launch Vita Homebrew. And you may also notice that Vita Shell has been installed into your live area. So from here, let's open up the settings application on our Vita. And the top option should now say Henkaku settings. So go ahead and push X on Henkaku settings here. And make sure you've got a tick inside the enable unsafe homebrew option like mine does here. This will give you more access to your Vita and allow you to install all types of Vita homebrew as well. You can also find some other interesting settings in here like PSN spoofing, which is how I'm able to connect to the PlayStation Network from low 3.65 firmware. While you're in the settings area, you should also scroll down to system, auto start settings, and just make sure that the download update file for system software is unticked. This will prevent your device from automatically downloading future firmware updates, which Sony may push out to try and patch this exploit. So definitely take the tick away from that option, and then you can close the settings as well. So next, let's take a look at Vita Shell itself. So here's how Vita Shell looks. When you first launch the program, you should push the Start button, bring up the menu here. So in here, you should set the Select button to be your desired method of connecting Vita Shell to the computer. So you can either use FTP, which will open up an FTP connection so that you connect. So you can either use a direct USB connection on a handheld Vita. This means you can plug the cable in, connect it to your computer, and then just pushing the Select button within Vita Shell will open your Vita up on the computer so that you can access the storage and send files quite easily as if it was a USB drive. And there's also the FTP option which is very useful on my PlayStation TV here, where obviously I can't connect it to the computer that way. And that allows you to connect to Vita Shell using an FTP client, such as WinSCP or FileZilla. I'll just push circle to close the main settings here. And then in the triangle menu as well, there are a couple of other really important options in here. I'll do another video talking about how you can use an SD to Vita adapter with Vita Shell to use a micro SD card as your Vita's UXO main primary storage instead of a Sony memory card, which is pretty incredible as well. 
Anyway, so as you scroll down the menu in Vita Shell, you'll find UXO. This is your Vita's primary storage. So by default, that's the Sony memory card, but you can see mine's 120 gigabytes in size. That's because I'm using an SD to Vita here. So I have a 128 gig micro SD card, which I'm using as my primary storage. And in here, you can see the default contents of the Vita's file system. So I do recommend everyone creates a VPK folder in the UXO, and this is just somewhere that you can send homebrew files to your Vita. So VPK files are just archives and they usually contain PS Vita homebrew. So I recommend people create a VPK directory or folder inside the UXO area. And you can do that within Vita Shell as well, just by pushing triangle, coming down to new, and then selecting new folder. And from here you can create a folder name and that will set you up with a folder inside your UXO here. So a really good example of how you can install Homebrew on your Vita using Vita Shell. If you have 3.65 firmware on your Vita, you're definitely going to want to send the latest ENSO file to your Vita so that you can install Henkaku ENSO on your device. So I'm going to go ahead and push select on my Vita at this point to set up the FTP connection. If you're on a handheld Vita though, you can just connect your USB cable to your computer and use the USB option if you'd prefer. So with this done, I'm going to switch to my computer, download the latest ENSO file, and then send it across using FTP to my PlayStation TV. Okay, so again, this is just for those of you who have 3.65 firmware. One of the lower links in the video description is going to be to this latest release of ENSO. So go ahead and download the ENSO.VPK file, and then open up your Vita's storage. And then you can either open up the Vita's as the attached USB device from my computer, or if you're like me and you're using the FTP connection, just go ahead and use your preferred FTP software, like I've got one SCP here, connected to my Vita, I'll open up the UXO memory card, I'll find my VPK folder, this is just where I like to send homebrew through to, and then I'll drag the enso.vpk across to the Vita, and I'll overwrite the old version there. So now I've got the latest version of the enso VPK sent to my Vita, I'll close my FTP software, and switch back to the Vita. Okay, so back in Vita Shell here, I'll push circle to close the connection. Now I'm gonna browse through to UXO, find exactly where I sent the homebrew file, which was in VPK folder for me. So here's the enso.vpk, I'm just gonna select it and then push X. Do you wanna install this package? I'll push X. It'll come up saying it requires extended permissions. I'll push X again, and it should then go ahead and install this VPK file directly to my live area or home screen. So when that's complete, I'll just push the home button to close out of Vita Shell. Now if I scroll down, I can see the Enso application is here as well. So if I was to go ahead and launch Enso, so here's how the Hinkaku Enso application looks, and it basically just gives you a warning here that it's gonna make permanent modifications to your Vita device. So push circle to accept these terms or any other key to not accept. And then from here you get the options, cross will install Enso on your device, triangle will uninstall it, square will fix your boot configuration, circle will exit the application without doing anything. So I've actually already got 3.65 Enso installed on my PSTV here. There's no harm in me just pushing X to install or reinstall Enso. So after reinstalling Enso there, my Vita's just rebooted. And yeah, the nice thing about having 3.65 firmware in Enso is that I could just go ahead and start up Vita Shell here now. And you can see my device can launch Vita Homebrew straight away. So for those of you that have 3.67 or 3.68 firmware and can't use Enso, you'll just need to start up the Encore Bootstrap menu here and then just exit out of it. Doing that at least once per boot will give your Vita permissions to run Vita Homebrew like Vita Shell again. Alright, so that pretty much covers how you can install H Encore on your Vita devices. I know that there are quite a large number of you out there who missed out on the original 3.60 firmware for the exploits. So hopefully you all enjoy Encore and are able to unleash the true potential of your Vita. So again, we've got to give huge credit to the flow for this release. I've made sure to include his PayPal link in the video description area. So if you feel like giving back and saying thanks to the flow, that's a great way that you can do so. Also, if you're interested in PlayStation Vita Homebrew and learning about what you can do with your device now that you have Encore installed, definitely stay tuned to the channel here, as in the coming few days and weeks, I'll be sure to update a lot of my older Vita videos and demonstrate how to use things like NoMP DRM to install Vita game backups, the latest version of Adrenaline to run both PSP and PS1 backups on your Vita, as well as other storage options that you have on your Vita like microSD card and USB storage. So that brings this video to a close. I hope you will enjoy H Encore from the flow and enjoy the ability of running Vita Homebrew on your devices. Until next time team, much love and peace out.